Hi, how are you? Welcome to my kitchen. My name is Jeff Smith, the Frugal Gourmet. And I want to remind you that the world is basically uh, here for you to enjoy. And in colonial times, during early American times, they enjoyed food just in a beautiful manner. But we've had some very strange uh, images of that time put upon us primarily from people who visited the time and didn't understand the colonies. It's true that we were eating a lot of, um, of smoked meats and salted meats, salt pork, for instance, which was very important to your diet. A salt pork uh, diet was common for a mama who had several children, and when she would reach down in the bottom of the salt pork barrel, scrape the bottom of the barrel, and realize she was out of salt pork, you know, it must have been tragic for her. But for the most part, we ate very well in the colonies. We always have eaten well in this country. But Frances Trollope, who came here in 1827, really didn't, uh, didn't appreciate our eating habits. She criticized us viciously, and I'm not sure that the old girl was wrong then, nor is she wrong now. She said, Americans eat with the greatest possible rapidity and in total silence, and they drink much too much whiskey. Well, nothing's changed there. And then she talks about, they, they mix strange things together. Why, she's seen us, I'm quoting from her journal now, she's seen us eating weird things together like, like eggs and oysters together. Well, that's called a hangtown fry. There's nothing weird about that. Francis, go back to England. Things were better for the rest of the colonies. And I have uh, spent a time in New York City just a few weeks ago locked up in a rare book carol. You know, they lock you into this gorgeous room in the public library, and I was able to read cookbooks starting with about, oh, 1564. So I tried to figure out for you today what it is that they really were eating in the colonies. Now, it was not, um, it was not common to find a cookbook. Most of the cookbooks came from England, were brought over with them. You see, they were very expensive, so that meant if you had a cookbook and recipes from England, uh, you were probably a pretty wealthy person to start with. On the other hand, if you wanted to wait for publication of an American cookbook, you had to wait until 1798. A gal by the name of Amelia Simmons published the first book on American cookery, and for the first time in the history of the world, we see a book that uses cornmeal. That was a very American product. It was a marvelous thing. But the time of uh, eating in that uh, culture has not really changed. We, uh, we still have the same problems. We still overeat too much. We were criticized for that. And we still eat too fast. We were criticized for that. I mean, we inherited from good old Tom Jefferson. You know, he ate like mad. You know what Tom brought us? I want to cook for you in a minute, but you know what Tom brought us? Tom Jefferson was the first one ever in the colonies to serve macaroni. He brought, brought it with him from Europe when he was one of our representatives over there. He was the first one to ever serve what he called the waffle. He found it in Belgium. You remember what a waffle is. Uh, macaroni, ice cream, he brought that to us. Uh, he loved wine. He brought rice to us. We'd never seen rice. He, he smuggled that out of, uh, uh, out of Italy and into the New World. We have a great history, and we should enjoy it. So today, let me give you some recipes. And I have put in amounts for you, just because it'll be more fun. But there are no amounts in these books. So let's get started with the first one from a cookbook called The Virginia Housewife, 1824. And it's called Matalote, or Matalote, and it's a fish dish. Are you ready? It's, it's just gorgeous. We'll have a lot of fun with these things today, and we'll cook them in a hurry. I'm going to get my pan going here, warm it up, throw in a bit of white fish. Now, remember, the recipes don't say how much of anything, so don't start asking questions. Just sit tight. I have cut up some uh, turbo. I, no, this is, a, yes, this is a turbo. Very beautiful fish. There we are. I've just put a bit in the pot, and the recipes go as follows. Are you ready? She says, cut up the fish and put it in the pot. Add the onions, as if... You know, that's automatic. The onions, well, I assume she means a handful of chopped onions. So we'll do that. And the parsley. So I think we should add the parsley. A handful of parsley. There we go. The thyme. And I'm assuming we'll just need a pinch of thyme. And the, what else? Oh, and the mushrooms. All right. Well, I have the mushrooms over here. So I'll add the mushrooms on the top of the pot. And then she says, add spice. Now, she's not talking about pepper because she's, she has pepper added later on. So let, we'll add some salt and pepper too. I don't know what she means by spice. I have no idea what she, which spice she's talking about. All spice and thyme wouldn't be any good. I have no idea what it was. 
There we are. A little pepper in this. Tiny pinch of salt. Remember, I'm trying to cut down on salt, too. We'll talk about that later on. In a week or so, I want to... A couple weeks, I want to talk with you about that. Okay, and uh, a bit of red wine to wet it completely, she says. So we'll measure out the red wine carefully. Where's the red wine? Here it is. To wet it completely. And I'm assuming this is wetting it completely. Good Lord. I think that's wet. Let's try again. There. All right. Now, we'll let that simmer for a bit, and the dish will be completed when we, uh, we uh, remove the uh, fish from the pot and then thicken the wine with a roux. Remember, roux is simply flour and butter, and you mix them equally, half and half, and here's a roux already prepared. You want it nice and thick, you see, pasty. And I've, you notice that this isn't white, you see? It's almost tan because I toasted the flour for a bit uh, in the butter so that you don't have a, uh, uh, you don't have a uh, um, white pasty flavor. Or, uh, and there is such a thing as a white flavor, you know, it's bland. You don't have a white pasty flavor or a white pasty look. You want to get rid of that. So let's cover up the matalote, and we'll go on to another one. These recipes are terrific. Incidentally, I want to thank the people at the New York Public Library. If you've not been in this room, uh, you've just got to go. If you love to cook, and if you love cookbooks, you must run into that place and see it. The cookbook collection alone is, you know, just more than I could understand. And they bring them to you on cushions, and they will not let you use, use ink pens in the room. They, give you a, they issue you a pencil so that if you make a mark in one of their books, you can get, you know, they can get rid of it. It's very carefully done and very beautifully done. It's an absolutely marvelous place. The New York Public Library Rare Book Collection. They're neat people, and they're all fanatics about books. Aren't they fun? The next one is a celery sauce from a, from a cookbook called The Frugal Housewife. No, I've never met the woman. It was published in 1802 in Philadelphia. And this sauce is to be used over boiled fowl, turkeys, and so on, she said. And it simply chopped celery. Get a pan going here for us. Simply chopped celery that you cook in a bit of water until it's barely tender. There we go. Let me get some water here for us. And we'll, uh, I don't want much, you know, oh, half a cup of water in the bottom of a pan on a hot burner, and we'll put in a good bit of celery. I've diced this, you see. This will take just a moment to cook down. There we are. I have lots of things to confuse you with today, so we'll have a good time. That'll take just a moment to go. And... Uh, we're going to thicken that with the roux as well, but we're going to add, and this will tell us something more about the history of the time. Uh, 1802, you see, was just, a, what, 20, uh, how many years after the signing of the Declaration when we told England we weren't going to put up with them anymore? I think it's just about 25, uh, just about uh, 20, 1776, whatever it is. Uh, 21, 26 years. <coughs> and uh, the book itself is, uh, is really interesting, The Frugal Housewife. She talks about using mace and nutmeg a great deal. Maybe that was the spice that the Virginia housewife was talking about. I don't know. I couldn't figure it out. I'm going to eliminate that spice. Maybe it was just an additional kind of pepper. I'm going to eliminate that from the matalote. But we will add some mace and some nutmeg to, uh, our, uh, to our, sauce for, uh, our celery sauce for, for fowl. So let's put some in right now. I have some... Uh, where did my nutmeg grater go? must be over on this side. Here it is. I'm using a marvelous gimmick uh, that's um, brought in from France. Oh, companies like uh, Ruoco, places like that would bring them in. And it simply shaves a little nutmeg out of the... Look at this. See, see how it just flakes in? Freshly shaved nutmeg. It's a lovely flavor. And then we're going to use some mace. And mace is the outside of the nutmeg. Did you know that? That mace and, and, uh, and nutmeg are very much related. Just a pinch. We don't want this to be too heavy, you see. There we are. And then she calls for some salt and pepper. And we can do that in a hurry. I have a little pinch right here. Pinch of salt. You notice I never use a salt shaker? I don't want to be uh, shaking salt because I can't control what I'm doing. I can't control the measurement. I can if I put it in my finger and I can see it. Okay. There we go. That should do us. Let's let that simmer. I'll give you the rest of the recipe right now. Again, we thicken it with the roux. She says that then add the roux after this is tender. After the celery is tender. She says add the roux. Thicken it with the roux. And then boil it up and pour it in the dish. Boil it up indeed, my dear. Here's another one of her recipes that I think is just a kick. It's a recipe for roasting a pig. Again, and I'm quoting directly from the book. Notice these are all notes I have because I'm you know, not about to take those books out of the library. You don't check out books printed in 1564. You're allowed to look at them, and it's a neat place. Anyhow, this one from 1802. To roast a pig. Are you ready? Write this all down now. Ready? It's complicated. To roast a pig. Spit your pig and lay it down to a clean fire, kept good at both ends, period, end of recipe, next page. 
Now, with that kind of clear insight, you and I could become great cooks, right? I love it. Let's do another one. This one is, uh, is from England, 1685. It was one of those books that they brought with them when they came to the New World, and it's a recipe for pickled oysters. And it's simply superb, and it's very, very easy. So here we go. We're going to put in a saucepan, let me just do this in front of you here. We're going to put in a saucepan uh, about a cup of oysters, if I can find them. Here we are, with their uh, sauce or juice. There we go. My friends came in this morning early and shucked these for us. Otherwise, shucking oysters is murder. And here again, mace appears. Now, this is in 1658 from England, but mace was common with oysters, if you can imagine it. And mace sounds, uh, it smells something like a cross between nutmeg and, uh, and um, oh, kind of an oily nutmeg, and perhaps a cinnamon. It's a little bit sweeter than regular nutmeg. So just a tiny bit of mace and uh, some whole black peppers into our pan here. What's boiling over already? Oh, and macaroni is almost done. Good. Excuse me while we turn this down. I love my gas range. I have a, I have a gas restaurant range here in my kitchen. Uh, you can pick one up, too. This is a series of, uh, of uh, two unit burners, you see? And you can pick up as many of these as you want and just run them along your kitchen. They're perfectly safe. They're marvelous. And uh, boy, when you want heat, you've got it. And that's what I want. Heat, heat, heat. There. Now let's try some salt. And I, again, I, I urge you, lay off the salt. So we're just going to put in a tiny pinch here and some wine vinegar to cook these in. Now, I'm assuming that red wine vinegar would be a little much, but it doesn't give you any explanation. I'll give you the whole recipe from, from the book. It says 18, uh, 1685, 1658, I'm sorry, the complete cook from England. Oysters cleaned, add mace, whole black pepper, salt, wine vinegar, simmer till tender, then chill. Okay, we'll do it. Boy, sure makes you wonder about the great cookbooks we have in our time, things like The Joy of Cooking, you know, which is a classic or some of James, uh, some of James Beard's uh, marvelous cookbooks, and he details everything in a, in a very joyful manner. In the old days, they expected you to be able to cook ahead of time. They thought you already knew what you were doing. Now then, we simmer these, the oysters cleaned with a bit of mace, whole black pepper, salt, wine vinegar, simmer, simmer it until tender, and let me show you what you get. I have mine in the refrigerator, already chilled. Here they are. I just love this dish. It's very unusual. I want to taste it right now and see what we have here. Just one will do, huh? There we go. Mmm. It's lovely. It's just lovely. It looks a little unattractive there. Let's put some parsley to one side. Why would they do such a thing? Why would they put mace and, and um, vinegar in, on, in lovely fresh oysters? Well, because they couldn't keep them, that's why. They were trying to pickle them so that they could preserve them. It says then, after you make this dish, you're supposed to keep it in copper barrels, and it will keep up to six days. In a copper barrel? Can you imagine how that must taste when you find it? Eat it? It must be awful. The vinegar would react with the copper. It'd be terrible. Well, let's go on to another one. Uh, I think it's time to take our fish off. It is. Let's see. I don't want to overcook that, you see. So let's, um, let's get a pan here and, and uh, get it off the stove. And we'll thicken it with the roux, remember? Well, the, the fish is done fine. It's just done beautifully. Look at how it's all red with wine, you see? Isn't that great? Now, I want to get these chunks of fish out of here right away so that I can thicken this with the roux. We'll keep it boiling. And then we'll have a matalote, which was common in, in uh, Europe. And evidently, this uh, 